Hi students, welcome to today's Delhi classroom of grade 8 general science. Our today's topic is unicellular organisms. This topic is taken from the stream biology. The theme in which this topic included is systematics and biodiversity. Okay, then let us check the learning intention of today's topic. Students should be able to explain and differentiate features of unicellular organisms from the rest of others in the world. That means the multicellular organisms. Success criteria of today's session is, I would be happy if you students are able to list out various unicellular organisms. Define the term unicellular organism. Find features of unicellular organisms and identify division of labor in amoeba. Well, anyhow, as you all know, our plant is the home for various organisms. And these organisms are different from each other in their size, shape, color and other various features of life. Various organisms exhibit different features and adaptations for their successful existence in their environment. Well, before going to those areas, let me clear some details from you. First of all, how can we differentiate a living thing from a non-living substance? Yes, living things show some special features which cannot be imitated perfectly by non-living substances. What are those special features exhibited by living things? Let us list out them now. Yes, those seven basic features of living things are movement, growth, feeding, respiration, reproduction, excretion, and sensitivity. Good. If so, now we are going to categorize all the organisms in our world into two groups. Unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms. Today, we will examine the various features of unicellular organisms. And we will get back to the term multicellular organisms in another session soon. Okay, now we will see a few micrographs of different unicellular organisms like bacteria and paramecium. But remember, those organisms are visible only through powerful microscopes. I hope you have noticed the diversified world of unicellular organisms. They exhibit variations in their body size, shape, locomotory structures and so on. Right, then now we will be ready for a simple activity. Let us make a list of at least 5 unicellular organisms found in our surroundings. Ready? Then try it now. Good. 
good i think now you are being ready with your answers let us check it now 1 bacteria 2 virus 3 unicellular fungi yeast 4 euglena and finally the fifth one is paramecium well then why can't we try to make a simple definition for the term unicellular organisms okay we will make it now itself you know as the word uni in their name indicated they are single celled organisms it means the whole body consists of a single cell alone good then how do you think of the efficiency level of a unicellular body in a competitive ecosystem surprisingly such a single cellular body is capable enough to carry out all the essential metabolic functions effectively and efficiently we will see how this division of labor done wisely with the help of a few videos nutrition in paramecium food paramecium feed in the holozoic manner the food consists chiefly of bacteria which float in water in which it lives it also feeds upon small protozoa unicellular plants and small pieces of animals and vegetables it will reject most of the known digestible material feeding mechanism paramecium swims to place where it can get its food its food catching apparatus is much more specialized food is ingested by a definite cell mouth or cytostome lying at the bottom of buccal cavity the constant lashing movement of cilia of oral groove compel a current of water with food particles towards the vestibule ciliary tracts of vestibule direct the food particles into buccal cavity the food now gradually collects at the bottom of cytopharynx excretion in protozoans excretion in unicellular organisms in unicellular animals like amoeba paramecium sponges and hydra most of the metabolic wastes are removed through the surface of the body by a process of diffusion they do not have any specialized organs of excretion locomotion and sensitivity in bacteria Although flagella may appear to undulate back and forth like an eel swimming through water, they actually rotate 360 degrees, clockwise or counterclockwise. The basal body spins, much like the drive shaft of an electric motor producing this motion. When the flagellum rotates counterclockwise, the bacteria runs in a single direction. When the flagellum rotates clockwise, the bacterium tumbles and changes direction. Movement toward or away from a stimulus is called taxis. The stimulus can be light in the case of phototaxis or a chemical in the case of chemotaxis. In either case, the bacterium contains receptors which send signals to the flagella. In the case of positive taxis or motion toward the stimulus, tumbles become less frequent when the cell moves toward the stimulus and more frequent when the cell moves away from the stimulus. well i hope now you are familiar with primary details about the mysterious mechanism of life in unicellular organisms anyhow we will take amoeba as a representative of this group to learn more about the life pattern and cellular structure for that we will watch a few more videos now 
structure and life pattern of amoeba Amoeba is unicellular meaning it is a single celled microscopic pond organism Though it is a unicellular organism it functions all the essential functions of life you might be wondering how does it do that let me explain but let's learn about its structure first amoeba has cell membrane a rounded dense nucleus and many small bubble like vacuoles in the cytoplasm amoeba keeps changing its position and shapes with the help of pseudopodia a finger like projection on the surface of amoeba It is also called false feet as it helps in the movement of amoeba from one place to another. Amoeba also uses pseudopodia to capture the food. For example, when it senses the food, it pushes out pseudopodia surrounding the food particle and engulf it. So the food becomes trapped in a food vacuole. Once trapped, digestive juices are secreted into the food vacuoles to break it down into simpler substances which gradually gets absorbed into the amoeba. The absorbed food is used for growth, multiplication and maintenance of amoeba. Let us make a simple labeled diagram of amoeba now. locomotion and movement in amoeba
nutrition in amoeba amoeba takes food using fingers like extensions of cell surface called as pseudopodia they fuse over the food particle by forming a food vacuole inside amoeba that food vacuoles complex substances are broken down into simple substances then these simple substances diffuses into cytoplasm the remaining undigested material is moved to the surface of cell and thrown outside reproduction and cell division in amoeba amoeba reproduces asexually by binary fission Binary fission is a type of asexual reproduction in which the fully grown parent cell splits into two halves producing two new daughter cells. At the time of binary fission, the amoeba withdraws pseudopodia and becomes spherical in shape. The nucleus splits longitudinally and divides into two daughter nuclei. These daughter nuclei move towards opposite poles. This is followed by the elongation of the parent cell. A fissure appears in the middle of the cytoplasm between the two daughter nuclei dividing the cells into two equal halves thus two daughter amoebae are produced from a single parent one of them has the original contractile vacuole while the other develops a new one the entire process of binary fission is completed in less than half an hour but this time varies with temperature right now we have a few questions to answer before that we will watch one more animated video which may help us while answering them <laughs> Question number one. Name the structure used to buy bacterium for its movement. Answer is flagellum. Question number two. How does amoeba excrete metabolic waste? answer amoeba remove metabolic waste by diffusion through its cell membrane question number 3 what method is adopted by amoeba for its reproduction answer amoeba reproduce asexually by binary fission hi students hope you have enjoyed today's lesson i will meet you in our next session with a new lesson thank you